Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation, so those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is Psalms, please read responsibly. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you. Save my life. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his servant. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today, Luke's Gospel has us walking on the road to Emmaus. The scene is set on the same day as the women's discovery of the empty tomb from Easter, and the scripture tells us that this was about a seven-mile walk. Not really that far in those days when people were used to walking. But there are some walks that are longer than others, not because of the miles or even because of the landscape, but because of the burdens. It's a long trip between Jerusalem and Emmaus because the distance between we had hoped and the Lord is risen indeed seems like forever like the longest trip ever. And are we there yet? 
The Emmaus journey appears only in Luke and is sometimes called the journey of every Christian. It has all the elements of the Christian life, discouragement, disappointment, doubt, risk, times of deep faith, the spirit of companionship, interpreting the scriptures, the presence of Christ in the sacraments, profound wonder and incomparable joy in telling others the good news of God made known in the risen Christ. So on this third Sunday of Easter, we find ourselves traveling a road that is uncomfortably familiar. Every one of us, regardless of identity or circumstance, knows this road. We've walked it. We've lost our way on it. We've left it behind and then returned to it. The road is the road to Emmaus, and we recognize it by the words we speak when our feet hit its rough and winding way one more time. But we had hoped. But we had hoped the tumor wasn't malignant. We had hoped our marriage would get easier. We had hoped our son would come home. We had hoped the depression would lift. We had hoped to keep our jobs. We had hoped to experience God's presence when we pray. We had hoped our faith would survive. The words we speak on the road to Emmaus are words of pain, disappointment, <coughs> bewilderment, and yearning. They're the words we say when we've come to the end of our hopes, when our expectations have been dashed, our cherished dreams are dead, and there's nothing left to do but leave, defeated and done. But we had hoped. Believe it or not, this is an Easter story. Hello. So, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes resurrection takes longer than three days. Sometimes new life comes in fits and starts. And sometimes seeing and recognizing the risen Jesus is difficult. But what our story is telling us today is the good news that even the road to Emmaus with its brokenness and failure is a sacred road. It's a road that Jesus walks. A road that honors our deep disappointment even as it holds out possibilities of nourishment and revelation. As Frederick Buechner put it, Jesus is apt to come into the very midst of life at its most real and inescapable moments. He never approached from on high, but always in the midst, in the midst of people, in the midst of real life, and the questions that real life asks. Jesus comes to us as we are, walking with us amid questions about death and darkness, loss and limits, questions about pain and wounds, fear and imperfection, Questions about what just happened and how we will continue. Questions about childhood and parenting, health and disease, work and money. Growing up and growing together. In these very real questions of life, Jesus comes near and walks with us. Two friends go walking. A stranger draws near and then leads the conversation, teaches them. The friends convince the stranger to stay with them as their guest. At table together, as bread is broken, we see the great reversal revealed. The stranger is Jesus. The guest is actually the host. In death's shadow, when God seems most distant, our deepest, perhaps unspoken desire is Jesus' companionship. In the words of the traditional spiritual, I want Jesus to walk with me. All along our pilgrim journeys, and when the shades of life are falling, our soul cries out, I want Jesus to walk with me. In our sorrows and when our hearts are aching, we plea, I want Jesus to walk with me. And Jesus answers us by reversing the question. Jesus says, walk with me. I am already here. Jesus is with us on the road. Jesus is the way. 
Monica Furlong in her book, Traveling In, wrote, the religious person is the one who believes that life is about making some kind of journey. Jesus says, come, follow me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Christianity has never been simply a static body of doctrine, but a dynamic way of life. The first term used in the New Testament to describe Christians were followers of the way. But I suppose if we're honest, we're not always quick to take the road. Well, I think I'm okay where I am now, thank you very much, we tell ourselves. The call to grow and change can make us feel insecure and frankly scared, and yet that is what resurrection life is about. The story of Emmaus is deeply encouraging. Wherever we are on our life's journey, we are never alone. We are joined, always joined, by another, the risen one. He is the one who always walks beside us when we're at the extremity of our strength, he is with us. In our time of greatest loneliness or trial, Emmaus reassures us that you are not alone, you have a companion. But we had hoped. Yes, we had, of course we had. So very many things are different right now than we had hoped they'd be. And yet, the stranger who is the Savior still meets us on the lonely road to Emmaus. The guest who becomes our host still nourishes us with presence, word, and bread. So keep walking. Keep telling the story. Keep honoring the stranger. Keep attending to your burning heart. Christ is risen. And he is no less risen on the road to Emmaus than he is anywhere else. So look for him. Listen for him. And when he lingers at your door, honoring your freedom, but yearning to feed you, say what he longs to hear. Stay with me. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us who journey on the way with Christ, risen and ever present in mystery, pray for the world with all our heart and mind, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church Universal and for this community of faith, that we may wholeheartedly devote ourselves to the apostolic teaching, to common life, to the breaking of bread and the life of prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and people of this wide earth, that we may be delivered from human devices of oppression and from false idols and futile ways, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who grieve and who are desperate or haunted by violence may know the hidden strength of Christ present. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless, those without bread, those tempted by vengeance and driven to rage, that they may find refuge and strength in the one who walks with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, for all those in need, especially those listed who are near to our hearts, and those we name silently or out loud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who protect and serve, as well as their families, the police, the firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and those serving in the military, especially those listed who are near to our hearts, and those we name silently or out loud. Roger. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those in our parish family celebrating birthdays this week, Joshua Grubb, and for those celebrating anniversaries this week, Victor and Jackie Shanley, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of calamity and for our own children, that they may come to know and to claim the promises of God to all generations, near and far off, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those having died in faith, especially the loved ones of Al and Ebby Carey, for whom the altar flowers are given, and for all the dying, that they may know the love of God, who has raised Christ up, having loosed the pangs of death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Preserve us all, O Lord, and take us home to your heart, so that all our lives may be woven together in prayer and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Yeah, right. Good, mo- good morning. How many? 37. <laughs> we do have announcements. <laughs> Real quick, um, talking about food, May 13th is the Saturday before Mother's Day, and traditionally we have made the lunches for the workers for Good Works in the Coatesville area, so we will be doing that again this year, so I need some volunteers. It, we're here and gone in less than two hours, so if that Saturday you could give me two hours of your time, probably from 9 to 11, I'd appreciate it. And I also need four dozen cookies, uh, preferably like a chocolate chip, no peanut butter because we don't know what allergies are out there. So if you see me, if you can sign up, and uh, it's May 13th. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, let me go first because we're talking food. Uh, <laughs> next Sunday is the Veterans Brunch. Again, we're going to be doing it on a quarterly basis. They're expecting, they're saying 25. We have a lot of food left over from a previous function, so we're going to put it to good use. So anybody that can come out and help, uh, we certainly appreciate it. So next Sunday after church, Veterans Brunch. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. This week I learned about a lot of wonderful programs in the community for kids in the summertime. So I'll be at coffee hour. Um, If you have children or grandchildren that need something to do in the summertime, there's great things happening. That's it. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. morning. So um, quite a number of people have signed up for the Bible study that we're starting, and that's really good news. So um, if you're really interested in that, you're not quite sure about whether you can do it or not, that's fine. Sign up anyway. It doesn't obligate you, but it gives us an idea of who's interested. I just want to say a couple things. Our gospel for today is perfect for this Bible study uh, because what we're going to be learning is the Emmaus way of understanding the scriptures. And Jesus teaches us how to read the scriptures. And listen to this gospel a little bit more, just two sentences from it. And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And that's the key. Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him when he broke the bread. And they said, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? So I thought that was really wonderful that this came up on this Sunday. So we're going to have one more week to sign up, and then we're going to settle on a time to meet. And I'm going to try to make that time during the week as available to as many people as possible. So if you're interested, if you're curious, uh, just speak to me very briefly. I'll be at coffee hour again. And uh, please, please put your name and an email address and or a telephone number on the sign-up sheet. It's right in the back, right there. So um, I'll be looking at that and contacting you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And from our floral department, this just in. Um, We have an open Sunday for altar flowers on May the 7th, which is two weeks from today. If anyone is interested in um, remembering a loved one uh, for that day, please uh, see me in the office after service. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Okay, 
This, uh, this Thursday, our healing service continues at noon via Zoom, and um, our vestry meeting is happening today at 11 a.m. in Stone Hall, so we'll have, have some coffee first and something to eat, and then 11 o'clock vestry meeting. And I would like to thank all those who came out yesterday to help with the mulching, weeding, and, and generally making our exterior look nice. I think there was something like 15 of us. It was a wonderful turnout, so thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy.
and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. And we thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Praise Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with blessed Cyril, our patron saint, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Hallelujah, be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.